Being my age, you got the privilege to see the earliest days of the video game industry evolve into what they are now. I was born in 1975, so I was 10 years old when the original Super Mario Bros. came out on the NES. It was my first console, and we got the Super Mario Bros. A Duck Hunt bundle. From there, I collected other such games, Contra, Dr. Mario, Friday the 13th, and so much more. I was a teenager when the Super Nintendo had released, and have had just as many fond memories with it as well, discovering the top secret area and how to beat Super Mario World without even completing World 2 made me feel like a total genius. As time went on, I still collect video games. PlayStation, Xbox, Wii, PS4, and the Switch were only just a few to name. It was amazing seeing video games evolve, going from 2 bits to 8 bits and 16 bits then breaking into the third dimension with some simple polygons, and now being able to replicate reality to the closest it's ever been, and don't even get me started on virtual reality and augmented reality. But I can't deny that the classics always drew me back in. It may be just nostalgia, but I'm not a big fan of many modern games. Live service games feel like way too much of a commitment, and I was more of a fan of action games rather than the slow cinematics that have become so popular. Thankfully, the indie scene does help me scratch that itch with some retro-inspired titles. Super Meat Boy, Shovel Knight, Pizza Tower, and Freedom Planet send me back in a fresh new way. I occasionally like to go to retro game stores and see if there are any classics that I may have missed out on, but it really seems like all that's really there is standard sports titles, most of which I already own, and the ones that weren't were way too expensive for me to even consider grabbing. Sometimes retro game stores love to rank up prices either based on the popularity of the franchise or if a popular YouTuber reviewed a game they just so happened to have. Trust me, the second one is way more common than you'd like to think. Thankfully, antique stores can sometimes have retro games. Even if the quality and quantity may be smaller, they're at least far cheaper than most retro game stores. So even if they don't work that well, I'm not losing as much as I would if I went to an overpriced retro game store. My collection is still growing to this day. Think like the set of Angry Video Game Nerd, but split in half. Just look at my NES collection. Super Mario Bros. 3, Jaws, Ghostbusters 2, Donkey Kong Collection, Castlevania, and... Hello? What is this? I may be almost 50, but do you think I'd remember getting a game like this? It was near the beginning of my collection, as I put everything in alphabetical order. It was an NES game with a white side label that had the words Apple Newton written in Sharpie. I pulled the game out, and the front cover was the same. I thought maybe someone had covered the real game with just a blank piece of paper, but no. This label was glued on just like the rest. I had never heard of a game called Apple Newton before, so I decided to do a quick Google search. The only things I could find were a discontinued PDA from Apple called The Newton, a PBS show called Newton's Apple that ran from the 80s to the late 90s, and a mid-2000s board game called Newton's Apple Gravity Strategy Game. I thought maybe this was some licensed game based on the PBS show, and someone had mistaken the title as Apple Newton. Without anything better to do, I decided to try this one out. My childhood NES was barely working anymore, so I decided to pull out the Rotron 3. It was an unofficial console that was able to play NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis games. All I had to do was put the game in the right slot and turn the lower knob to NES. It took me a few tries to get the game working, but after cleaning the cartridge with a cotton swab, I was finally able to get it on. The title screen was very standard for an NES title. The logo was blocky in the color red with a green shadow. And yes, it did indeed read Apple Newton. So it wasn't a typo. And now it made me even more curious. What was this game all about? There were two options on screen. Start game, and password. They were able to be selected by a cursor that was shaped like a leaf. Oh, how cute. Of course, this was one of those games that made you use the select button to navigate the menu. There was no information on this game online, so I had to press start game. This game seemed pretty competent. It even had cutscenes similar to what you'd see in games like Ninja Gaiden. But unlike Tecmo's classic, these were only still images. There was no text or even any fade in. The images just popped back and forth. Kinda lazy, but still presentable enough. Maybe I got my hands on a game that was never completed. Perhaps maybe this was an early version used for testing, before whatever company produced this title had cancelled it. 
Canceling games that were near completion wasn't uncommon. Thrill Kill, Penn and Teller, Smoke and Mirrors, and Star Fox 2 were such games that were also completed, but never released. Well, okay, Star Fox 2 did eventually release on the Switch's online service, but I guess that will only be the case until that service shuts down. Then it's back to being lost. Great, isn't it? Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. The cutscene showed an apple falling from a tree. The second shot shows this apple growing limbs and a face after bouncing off the ground. They looked ecstatic to be alive, with a huge open smile and all of his limbs pointed outward in a celebratory pose. The last shot sees him running into the distance. And then the game finally starts. The text, Happy Apple Farm, came on screen. The level loaded, and Apple Newton runs from the side of the screen and stops to do a pose with a quick jingle. The level looks like a giant farmland with numerous trees all with apples in them. The perspective seems to be as if that Newton was the size of a real apple, as everything around him was huge. I moved him to the right where I could see a wooden sign take up most of the screen. The sign was telling me how to control Apple Newton. The controls were as so. Press left and right on the D-pad to move. Press down to crouch. A to jump. B to open mouth. Press B again to release held object. Hold B while moving to run, press down while running to roll, and press down in the air to do a ground pound. Pretty complex for an NES platformer, honestly. I don't remember that many games from this era even having a ground pound or a roll. Sure, there was Kirby after he got the wheel ability, but it really wasn't as common as it is now. I tested out all their abilities and moved forward. I wasn't sure what the open mouth ability was for until I saw a large seed. I decided to use this ability on it, and Apple Newton put the seed in his mouth. This made him double in size, and despite how awkward it looked for him to move, he was still able to use all of his abilities just fine. All that was really different was his size, and both his running speed and jumping height were slightly reduced, but his ground pound and roll seemed to be even stronger than before. An enemy was approaching me, a banana with cartoonishly sharp teeth. Pressing the B button again caused the seed to shoot out and kill the banana. He flickered away like most games would, but the seed still remained. It seems that they designed this game around both sizes of Apple Newton and the seed. It makes me wonder how successful this game would have been if it did release. I faced a few other enemies like a rolling orange with one eye on its side. Speaking of Kirby's wheel ability, it did bear a striking resemblance to Wheelie from Kirby's Adventure with an orange color instead of black. It almost looked like they got the same sprite and recolored it. Maybe it was a placeholder? The second enemy was a grape with a simple, angry expression. It would bounce around the stage towards me, and even change direction if I were to pass it. Most of those enemies were easily killed by jumping on them, but using the seed was much easier, especially against the bananas, and so if I were to jump on them, I would stick to it while performing a slipping motion, sliding uncontrollably in the direction I was facing. I could still jump, but I kept the momentum, and it still took a hit of damage. I could see speedrunners doing some fun things with this game. Don't worry about the damage though, there was a meter on the top right of the screen. The more I progressed throughout the stage, and the more enemies I'd kill, the more the meter would fill. Once completely filled, the screen would freeze and flash for a short bit, as it would regenerate one of the hits I may have lost. That's actually a really cool system. I tried moving backwards through the stage, but the meter wouldn't budge, so it would only be filled if I continued through the stage. I had never seen a game do that before. Also, this game seemed to be generous with its health, because I had a total of 5 hits I could take before dying. There was also the number 15 under my health bar. Wow, that's a lot of lives to start with. Right at the end of the stage was a new sprite. It seemed like the banana enemy, but laying down. Motionless. It looked to be almost completely brown. I wasn't sure what this was, but jumping on them caused the same effect as jumping on the moving bananas. So I suppose this was like a bear trap variation of the moving banana. After beating the stage, I was brought to a map and given a password to come back to the stage when needed. The password was capital B, exclamation point, lowercase r, plus capital H. The map moved horizontally with numbers over each stage counting upward. There seemed to be four stages per world. Most of the stages used the same enemies and patterns. Well, there was this one stage where I was climbing inside of a tree, you could see holes that I guess were supposed to show the outside, but instead of a blue sky, it was completely black. I guess they didn't have time to complete this visual. As I progressed through these stages, the creep enemies became more and more common, along with these new raisin variations. 
They slouched over and could only walk across the stage, much like a Goomba in most Mario games. I thought it was done with the variations, but then came a new version of the orange. It looked deflated and his eye gave an angry look. At least I think it was angry. The position of the eyebrow made it difficult to tell. He seemed to be moving like the raisin, but instead of moving forward, it would pace back and forth, occasionally gaining speed as it would squint while doing so, but it would always slow back down. Still harder to deal with in comparison to the grapes though. When I got to the fourth stage, I was brought to the boss. So I suppose each world has three levels and a boss. The boss was a batch of grapes all connected to a tree-like formation. All of them have the same angry expressions as their brethren. Then a text box would rise from the bottom of the screen and show white text. That's it! We're gonna hurt you a bunch! The word bunch was capitalized, by the way. I lifted an eyebrow and made a sarcastic chuckle. How this boss would play is that each grape would shoot itself out in a horizontal straight line and boomerang back to its spot. It kind of reminded me of the Yellow Devil boss from the Mega Man games. Man, I really gotta stop comparing this game to others. I could only hurt them when they were disconnected from the roots. So, one by one, I defeated all of the grapes. Except for the one on top. They did nothing but stare at me. Then, all of a sudden, the game flashed like I had just filled the level progress meter. But it wasn't full. And not only this, but instead of gaining health, I lost some instead. I lost one hit from my health bar. And I don't mean it caused me damage, I mean that as in my health bar's max went from 5 to 4. Then the number under it had changed to 30. Then I noticed the boss's appearance had changed. He instead looked sad, and there was a bit more detail on his face. A few more pixels that I had no idea what they were supposed to mean. Apple Newton also had the same amount of detail around his eyes as well, and his eyes looked a tiny bit smaller. The text box rose from the bottom of the screen again. It read, Do you remember that? Returning to the world map, I was allowed to move on to the next area. Full Carton City. This presented itself as a massive city, but the buildings had round tops instead of squares. I went into the first stage, where I was immediately confronted by a new character. An egg that looked like an old woman. Oh my yolks! Bandits have stolen my truck! It was filled with all sorts of ingredients. Without it, how would I be able to continue my business? What? You chase after those expired ones? Thank you! I'll be sure to bake you my specialty as a reward. Pumpkin pie! The screen went black, and now I'm on the stage. Apple Newton was in the middle of a street, as stopped vehicles in a traffic jam were the platforms. What's strange was that Apple Newton's appearance was just like how it was after beating the Grape Bunch. Smaller eyes, and extra detail, and my health was still reduced to 4 hits, and the mysterious number was still 30. But now there were changes in gameplay. Now there was a sprint meter. In the first world, I was able to run for as long as I liked, but now I can only run for as long as the meter would allow, but it seemed to be generous with how much sprint it gave me, and it recharges rather quickly. All I had to do to recharge was stop sprinting. I would walk, and jump, and it would still charge. The first enemy, and most likely the cause of this traffic jam, presented itself. An egg with a robber's outfit. The only thing you could see were his eyes and mouth. His limbs were black lines, perhaps a style choice or an unfinished sprite sheet? There were a few variations of the bandits. Some had guns, others had shields and guns, but there were also a few that relied on brute force, as they would try to hit me with punches and dives. For the bandits that had the shield and gun, I couldn't use to see it on them, so I had to jump upon their heads. But this is when I realized that Apple Newton's jump was also reduced in height. Perhaps I was simply imagining things, as these were the largest enemies I have encountered yet. I was moving across the stage, jumping over trucks and convertibles all while fighting bandits. When I got careless, I got shot by one of them. The screen flashed white for a moment, and when I returned, everything was gone. All of the bandits? All of the vehicles, and all of the people were no more. The background changed as well. Windows were broken, doors were boarded up, litter was everywhere, and while I had said that all of the cars disappeared, there still seemed to be a few in the background. They too were abandoned, as their hoods would be bent or their windows shattered. All of the music was absent. The city had just turned into a ghost town. All I could do was walk forward. This was easier said than done now that my run was limited, but... I pushed on. I was beginning to wonder what this game's deal was. 
What was it trying to convey? This must have been some really ambitious project before it got scrapped. Makes me wish it was released to the public. On my walk, the buildings began to crumble more and more. Vegetation began to take over, and eventually all of the signs of city life were gone, and what was left were just a few broken relics completely covered up by nature. It was at this point when Newton stopped in his tracks. I didn't tell him to do that, and none of my inputs would work. He just stood there for a few moments. Then the screen flashed white again, and I was back to the world map. The first stage was complete. I still didn't know what happened back there. It definitely wasn't a glitch, as if it was, the location I'd be sent to would either be reused assets like Minus World and Super Mario Bros., or be either a mess of visuals as the game would soon crash afterwards. This was clearly by design. Perhaps the devs had a story to tell. Most games would either make their goal obvious from the beginning, but I guess this one was taking a different approach. The second level took me to... Oh god, of course. A sewer level. For those who don't know, sewer levels were a common trope in many NES games. Batman, Mega Man 4, TMNT, and the entirety of Mario Brothers all had sewer levels. Some were good, but some were bad. It was a hit or miss, but still an annoying trope nonetheless. The most you'd ever see these days is a sewer in some horror game or a modern Ninja Turtles title. Despite this, seeing the sewers made me a bit nostalgic. Even though they were an overused trope, they still symbolized the NES to some capacity. The bandits were more active in this stage, but it was easier to avoid them as the sewers had far less obstacles to deal with, minus the occasional gaps of water that I had to jump over. There were some bandits driving jet skis in the water in the foreground. The splash would cause damage if it were to hit Newton, but there was no way to kill them, so they seemed to be the only real obstacle. At the end of the stage, I saw a truck with egg bandits trying to empty it. When they noticed me, they attacked, but I was already used to dealing with them at this point. More eggs would jump out of the truck to attack, but when I beat the last one, the truck began to drive off. The third stage had me on the rooftops. Well, sort of. Like I said, the buildings had round tops, so what I was walking on was the rim that separated the round top from the square bottom of the rest of the building. I guess I was chasing after the truck from up high. There was no music, and the sky was a gloomy gray. A few bombs would be thrown my way, and some bandits climbed to face Newton, but this was the worst a level had to offer. As I would continue through the stage, I swore I could have seen something in the sky. A white line, perhaps? It was only there for a fraction of a second, so I could pass it as some graphical glitch, or even my own imagination. As the level stage went on, there were less eggs climbing up, and soon the bombs became absent. And now I know it wasn't my imagination, as more white lines would start climbing up the screen into the gray sky. At this point, there were no more egg bandits chasing me, and the stage was just as empty as a city before. Then, just as I thought the stage was over, I saw a new face. This one was also an egg, but it wasn't wearing the burglar outfit. But it also wasn't the old lady I met at the beginning of the world. They weren't wearing anything, and also had the same extra detail as Apple Newton had gained. He was looking around, confused. He didn't seem to know where he was or what he was doing. When I was at the same platform as him, he didn't seem to notice or even care. It was almost as if I didn't exist to him. Walking into him wouldn't cause any damage either but I could still jump on him. This was the only character that was like this throughout the entire stage, as it ended soon afterwards. I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be feeling right now, so I kept playing, hoping I would find some kind of answer. And now we're at the boss. I was in front of a bakery called Aunt Egg Sweet Treats. So that was the old lady I met earlier. The sign would show a large graphic of Aunt Egg holding a plate with the logo inside. The truck was driven by another egg with a curly mustache, the text rose up once more. <laughs> now I will finally figure out Aunt Egg's secret. You won't scramble my plans. Okay, he was dying just for that joke. He would continuously try to run me over, but thanks to the additional platform in the center of the stage, I was able to jump over. I was a bit confused in how I would defeat this guy, until I got frustrated and spat my seed into his windshield. This caused him to get out and yell at me. This was the only time I could actually damage him. All I had to do was wait until he stopped, destroy his windshield, and jump on his head while he was shouting at me. I repeated this up to five times, and the truck finally broke down. Just like most other games, a few explosion effects covered the truck until the tires popped off, and he jumped out of the destroyed vehicle and got on his hands and knees pleading for mercy. 
But before anything else could have happened, the screen flashed white once more, and now the scene had changed. I lost another point of health. Now I'm down to three, and a number with an unknown purpose now read 45. Abel Newton lost his cheery demeanor, and now looked tired with even more detail on his face. The egg boss was standing in front of me. He too had an extra amount of detail on his face, but his mustache was lighter in color, and he was standing with a cane. Aunt Egg's sweet treats was completely abandoned, the sign was covered in grime, and the door was boarded shut. A text box appeared that read, They used to taste so good. I never figured out her secret. I finally figured out what was happening to Apple Newton. He was getting older. Those details on his face were wrinkles. I'm assuming that's what that number under his health bar represents. It's his age. He was now 45 years old, almost as old as me. This might also be why his health was going down and why he needed a sprint meter. I'm not sure how I feel about all of this. It's getting a little too real for me. It was actually making me a little depressed. I can relate to Newton, as now my body isn't what it used to be. And just like Aunt Egg's sweet treats, I too miss some closed down establishments I used to enjoy. The local arcade that's now an insurance company, the blockbuster that's now a Dunkin' Donuts, and how my local mall is living on its last legs with barely a few stores left. A Spencer's, Bed Bath & Beyond, and an antique store. Perhaps this is what the devs were trying to convey, as they were probably going through something similar as well. I had never seen a game back then tell a story like this. Some modern titles, yes, but none on the NES. It was either save the princess, stop the alien invasion, or save the world. Not face the existential dread of aging. I decided to keep playing, just because I wanted to hope there was some kind of happy ending, a light at the end of the tunnel, something to salvage this depressive adventure. The new password was capital D, lowercase y, exclamation point, lowercase n, and lowercase q. The world I was in was called Frozen Good Health. Now we're at our ice level, a cliche that still persists to this day. Newton was in a snow-covered forest at nighttime. The stars above blinked in and out every now and then, and the soundtrack tended to have a jolly feel to it, as jolly as the NES sound chip would allow it to anyway. Before I could take my first step, a polar bear jumped out at me. This polar bear was covered in chocolate syrup, had a banana on its back, topped with a scoop of strawberry ice cream, sprinkles, and a cherry. But obviously they had some issues due to the NES's color limitation. For those who don't know, an NES sprite had a limit of four colors, so the cherry was the same color as the strawberry ice cream. The beast charged at me and I instinctively jumped over. I just barely grazed over the bear as I noticed that my jump was reduced again. It also seemed like Newton would freeze as soon as he landed, as if he had to take in the impact of his own jump. Anyone remember that country song with the lyric? When your legs don't work like they used to before. Those who do may understand what Apple Newton could be going through. I tried to summon and hold my seed, but as soon as I did, the screen flashed white for one moment, as the sound it plays when taking damage played. But it was drawn out and louder than ever before. Apple Newton was standing by himself in a black void, as his cheeks were torn wide open. The large seed was sitting beside him, as he had a shocked expression on his face. His pupils were small, and his eyes were as wide as they were when the game started, and a greenish liquid was oozing from him as he was standing in a puddle of it. The screen froze as the tone you would hear when an NES game crashes played through my television. I was afraid that my time with this game was over. I was conflicted at how I should feel about it. Should I take this as a sign to leave before I get more depressed, or try again to see if there's some sort of happy ending? I reset the console and put in the password. But instead of spawning in the first stage, I moved on to the second. I was in a hospital as a chocolate bar nurse was staring at Apple. He stood up and was wrapped from head to toe with bandages. I guess he couldn't see because his input was reversed. What was worse was that my health was reduced again to two hits. I didn't even get to utilize the three hits before that happened. When the nurse saw this, she ran towards me. And as soon as she touched me, the screen reset. There was no death animation no level name coming on screen again, his screen just flashed and I was back in bed. I had to avoid the nurses by either jumping over them or avoid their gaze if possible. While navigating the hospital, I passed multiple large doorways. These doors were so massive that I was able to see the entire room they presented. 
I saw so familiar faces in each one. The first banana. It was a brown version at the end of the first stage. Then the raisin, then the droopy orange, and the stem of the grape bunch. But the head was still by himself, and now he appeared as a raisin himself. I understand now. These other variants were simply the same characters, just feeling the effects of aging too. Just like Newton was. Like I am. I noticed a flight of stairs and went down to the next level. There I was, moving to the left instead, still avoiding ice cream cone nurses and gumdrop doctors. On this floor, I saw the characters of the second world, first the Egg Bandit. It was the same confused one I saw on the rooftops of Full Carton City. He still looked confused and scared, looking back and forth as if he didn't know where he was. I saw a few other eggs, and the boss too. He was in terrible condition. His mustache was much smaller and lighter in color, and he himself seemed a bit discolored as well. The last room shocked me the most. It was Aunt Egg, but I couldn't see her face as the blanket was pulled over her body, but I knew it was her, because a pumpkin pie was left by her bed. She was dead, and just to act as a confirmation, a white sphere left her body and flew upwards outside of the screen. She lived her life, but it came to an end just like all these other characters will. I went down the last flight of stairs, and went through the last horde of doctors and nurses. As soon as I went through the exit on the right, the screen turned black, and white text came on the screen. Please, you've done so much. Let us remember you for the hero you were. The screen faded back in, and I was outside. Apple Seed was sitting on the ground near the building. I couldn't open my mouth to inhale it, so I had no choice but to leave it behind. Stage 3 Apple couldn't see where he was going, so he stood in an ice platform as it began to slide downhill. I didn't have to move that much, all I had to do was jump at the right time to move oncoming debris, and to move from one sliding platform to the other if one began to sink too far into the snow. It was a hectic stage that changed the tone for a bit, but it was short-lived. The stages seemed to be getting shorter and shorter as well. I was at the boss stage, and I wasn't sure how this was going to go, since I had no way to defend myself. The polar bear had returned, but he appeared to be skeletally thin. The banana on his back had turned to mush, the strawberry ice cream scoop melted, and is now mixing with the chocolate syrup, and the cherry on top was gone. He slowly crawled towards me, and no matter what I did, Apple Newton wouldn't move. The monster itched closer and closer, but it was never able to reach Newton, as the screen flashed again and what was left behind was the skeleton of the monster covered in pink and brown melting bits. The sun was rising, turning the sky into a purplish color with an orange light in the distant horizon. But the light was obscured by the mountain I kept seeing in the background. The orange light will almost appear as an outline for it. I was closer than ever before to it. My health was reduced to one single hit, and the number under it, Apple Newton's age, was now 60. The screen faded to black, and I was brought to the final world. As I entered the map for the final world, the bridge that connected itself to the other worlds prior had disappeared. I was at the end game. I was hoping there would be something that would at least bring my mood up at the end, but what I saw next would do the exact opposite. The world I was in was called the Finished Plate Plains. It was a gray world full of white dots and spheres that would rise upward. Each varied in size, and if they rose far enough, they would pick up speed and become a white line that would fly into the gray sky. Just like what I saw in Full Carton City. The music was a slow beat that wouldn't stay on any consistent rhythm. It would be fast at one point, slow the next, and try and speed up only to fall back down in tempo. It was like an AI was trying to make a theme but was never told the tone it should be. The password was 3 lowercase n capital D capital N lowercase g. There was only one level in this world, on a single dot that would be in front of the mountain, the same mountain I kept seeing throughout almost every stage as a backdrop, and now I was finally about to climb it. I entered the stage, and the state that Apple Newton was in was shocking. His body looked as if he had been deflated. The extra detail on his face were now black lines that wrapped all around his body, and even connected his eyes to his mouth, which too were black as if he gave off a sad, tired expression. On the left side of his face, where his cheek exploded, there was a huge black line that almost appeared as the root of decay. He was almost no more. The sprint meter was completely gone, 
as he could no longer run or jump. His walking speed was reduced to a snail's pace, and all of his abilities were unusable. Time was not so kind to Newton. The stage was a long gray wasteland with almost nothing for miles. There were pits that led to darkness, but as my jumping was disabled, I could only go over them by walking on the platforms that moved left and right over top of them. I suppose the theme of the stage was timing. All I could do was walk and wait for platforms to take me to the next part of the stage. There were platforms that rotated in circles, some that would act as temporary walls as they moved vertically, and ones that would fall if I didn't walk off them fast enough. At first the plane was flat, but then the platforms would begin to help me up the mountain. There was a white and gold platform with gems all over it. It was being held by two black lines. One on each side as if it was connected to a diagonal line that went up the mountain. It was like some royal gondola lift. I stepped on the platform as it began to ascend. As I scaled up the mountain further and further, Apple Newton's age had changed again. He was now 70 years old, but I could not tell if his appearance had changed as he was facing away from the screen. All I could see were certain familiar structures in the distance, as silhouettes like how I saw the mountain from there. First, I saw a large tree, and a farmhouse representing the happy apple farm, except now the tree was dead, and the farmhouse building was boarded up. It was leaning to the side as if the roof was caving in. Now I noticed something on the mountain, strange structures that would pass by the lift. Gravestones. Each one had a gray sprite of a character I encountered throughout my journey, all of which were in their prime. Their names would also appear on screen, telling me that this was the ending of my adventure. Banana slips, grape goons, orange pillars, and a ghastly grape bunch. The screen faded. Age 80. I saw the next location. Full Carton City. It appeared like the post-apocalyptic version I was walking through when the game changed on me after getting shot by one of the egg runs. Aunt Egg. Egg Bandit, Egg Blaster, Egg Barrier, Jet Ski Egg, and Johnny Hardboiled Yokini. Age 90. I knew what place was coming next. Frozen Good Health. But it didn't appear as I expected it to. It was still standing, and the yellow squares the route had told me they were still in business. There was something different about it. It didn't seem to be a hospital anymore, as it had the words... Heroes Museum written on it with blocky pixelated text and next to it was a tall tree that was longer than the building itself the tree itself looked nothing like the pine trees in the forest but instead a tree similar to what was in Happy Apple Farm I can't say for sure but if I had to guess it would seem as though that the tree was at the same spot as where I left my seat after leaving the hospital the names were of the nurses and doctors whose names were Coco Bar Nurse Miss Neapolitan, Dr. Smalldrop, and even the polar bear had his own grave. Sunday surprise attack. The music at this point changed. It seemed like it finally decided what it wanted to be. It was a slow theme that felt a bit sad, but something about it seemed... hopeful. The lift finally made it to the top of the mountain. There, all three worlds could be seen in the distance, and more as well. Some I never got the chance to explore. Perhaps they were built later in Apple Newton's life, as they did seem more populated than where he was from. Apple Newton was now a hundred years old, and he was facing away from me. I was no longer in control of him, as he walked slowly to the center of the mountain. There he stood, taking in everything. I could not tell how he felt as I still couldn't see his face. After a while, he collapsed, and there he laid, as a white sphere left his body and rose up with the rest. I waited for the screen to fade, but it never did. After a few minutes of taking everything in myself, and waiting for something else to happen, I would finally decided to turn off the console. A few days have passed, and as silly as it sounds, I think the game really changed me. Something about the experience stuck with me. It made me appreciate the life I had. Sure, I may be old, and my body doesn't work as well as it once did, but I'm still alive. And I may be for many years to come. I used to be existential about the end, fearing my own age and dreading the changes in my body, but now I think I have learned to embrace them. We may all die one day, as most of us will at least grow old, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the time we have, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the time we have and do something with ourselves, 
to make an impact in the world that may even remain after we pass on. Many may say there's no point because of how insignificant we are. But it's not about defying significance. Significance doesn't care about us, and time despises us. So why should we care what they think when we could be enjoying what we have now? I still keep the cartridge in my collection, but I haven't played it again since that day. I might one day get footage of it to show everyone else, but that's when I learn how to use capture cards, and when I feel like going through Newton's life again. Thank you, Apple Newton.